the vSearch pipeline. So now we have done some demultiplexing and we have some FASTQ files here in uh, some demultiplex FASTQ file, one for each sample. You can see the sample name is in the file name here. Uh, let's see how we use uh, vSearch pipeline to process this. Well, first of all, you need, of course, to have the, the script itself. So uh, it's again under my uh, home folder, MIDI Amplicon Illumina. And there should be a script called vSearch Pipeline with capital letters. Copy it here. So you can see I also now have this. And we can go into our studio, refresh here to see, to see it's here. Let's click it open. And again, what do you have to edit? Well, you typically have to edit the name of the metadata file because the demultiplex script should produce a text file here, which is sort of a copy, you could say, of the content of the Excel file that we used as input to the demultiplexing. So it just copies the content of that. It adds one extra column, actually, with the number of reads per sample. So this is the this is the sort of the metadata file you should refer to. And notice I give no path to it here because it's in the same folder as the script. If it's not, you have to, of course, Give the path. Where are the FASTQ files? Well, this is also the output from the demultiplexing step. And you need some temporary folder. I just, you can call it whatever you like, but I call it TMPV, such you know, because I want to run several pipelines in the same folder. So it's, I, I would like to keep the temp, different temporary folders for the different pipelines. That's why I put a name on it. And then the settings here. Uh, as I briefly mentioned in the demultiplexing, the trimming here is something you have to decide from, uh, from data set to data set, I think. Inspect that uh, trimming guide here and see how much can you afford to trim. And you shouldn't trim maximum because yeah, if you really want to investigate this, you, sh you should actually try trimming the different uh, uh, amount of bases look at the output and not only how many reads are merged but how many are correctly merged and that's more tricky but you can actually say something about it by looking at how how many copies you get of the most uh, abundant reads because i i think that the more copies you get the more correct the re merging was but but that's a really a big job so usually it's it's enough to just make up your mind here and trim uh, based on this plot here right how much can you afford to lose by trimming and then you just uh, split that usually you trim the r2 reads more than the r1 instead of spreading it equally you you take more from r2 than you do from r1 because r2 r has more errors but again Inspect your quality, data quality and make up your mind. Apart from that, I don't think you need to change much here. The mean size here is a two, and that's uh, default. You can go higher than two, but you should never go down to one, I can say. This is the minimum uh, copy number for the centroid sequence in each OTU, so we should at least see two copies. And the rest is, I think, nothing to edit and then we just s batch again so save but since i never changed anything here s batch the vsearch script and then hopefully it starts and runs and this is sort of quick but of course if you have many data sets it takes some time yeah we can see it started here now okay so now the vsearch has uh, finished and uh, we can see that the output, yeah, first of all, we can have a look at this TMP folder. There should now be one FASTA file for each sample here. Uh, there should also be a fi FASTA file with all reads from all samples merged and, uh, or 
not merged, but assembled into one big file. And also a de-replication of that one. Yeah, All of these are sort of temporary files you may now delete. Uh, this one is uh, output towards the end. Previously, we uh, had the script such that this uh, metadata text file was updated with some new columns after by this script. You can say how many reads uh, survived uh, filtering and merging and so on. This is no longer updated in this file. Instead, it's written now to this file as an R data file. So in, in case you want to uh, sort of add these columns to you, to the actual metadata file, you have to do it yourself. And the reason we did this change is that we have several different pipelines, right, for processing this type of data. So uh, I think it should be up to you which ones you run and which ones you include in, in this file. So it will need you to do some R coding. <laughs> Read in this file, in this is a text file, then just load this file and then join them so that you get the extra information here also into that. And then write this one to a file again. That's a text file if, if you want to do that. But let's not dwell with that. The, other, the more important output are these two FASTA files with centroids. And notice this vSearch is doing actually two, two types of processing, right? It do first ordinary sort of OTU clustering, the classical one with, and here we used identity point 0.97. You may edit this, of course. And the other one is the U noise denoising processing, resulting in this FASTA file, this number of set OTUs, as we call them. And here is the setting for, for that set OTU. You, we, we rarely change this one. Uh, the diff we can see from the sizes here that the number of set OTUs is much lower. It's less than half the total number of OTUs up here. And that may be strange if this is sort of zero radius OTUs. Shouldn't there be more of them? Well, yes, in principle. But keep in mind that this U-noise procedure has a very, very strict uh, requirement for this here. It's not really something you can tune at all. It says that you have to have eight copies to be a centroid. So if you want to have old use at the same range as set old use, set this one to eight and run and look and see if not this file becomes quite similar to this file. Yeah, OK. We also have the read counts table corresponding then to this old use from the Two of them. So that should really be it. And as everything worked fine, I delete the log file. I also delete the delete the log files. They only are important when things go wrong. 